Lawan and I watched um, The Encounter, I could put it capital T, capital E, between Jimmy Dore and Cornell West. So you're not saying Donald Joe Biden is a fa- fascist, really? I, I said the fascist dimensions to the to the Biden okay. project. You're absolutely right. It's but like you're campaigning is, for Joe Biden almost when you're doing this. Oh, that's what no, it sounds that, like. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. But that's what it's, I'm not saying you are doing that. I'm saying that's what it sounds that's like. What it sounds like to you. And we also watched your coverage uh, of the encounter. I already saw people say they're sad, they're depressed, they're heartbroken by what they saw last night. And I'm going to make it very clear to you. I'm not sad. I'm not depressed. I'm not heartbroken. I'm disappointed. And I'm going to talk about both sides, both sides. So I'm not sad. I'm not depressed because I'm not relying on a politician to come and save me. What the heck was going on there? It seemed to me like it was not exactly what was on the surface, like there was something deeper kind of going on there. For people who may not have caught this, Jimmy Dore, the comedian and a podcaster and a notable uh, public commentator from the left, took Cornell West to task uh, because whereas Cornell West was quick to say that Donald Trump was a fascist, he well, he pulled his punches when it came to talking about uh, uh, Joe Biden, milquetoast neoliberal is as far as he would go. And Jimmy Dore was saying, man, what's up with that? You got to got to call him like you see him. Uh, Biden is as much a fascist as Trump. And as a person who is not on the left, when I saw this, I said, this is a circular firing squad here. Am I wrong? I think that uh, for people like Dr. West, and I I showed this video recently uh, about Jill Stein too, when they're talking about fascism, they're looking at the definition in reference to breaking the letter of the law, so to speak. When they say that Donald Trump is fascist, they're thinking about like January 6th. See, under Biden, what you have is a fascist dimension domestically, especially against Black folk and others. You and I, the very fact that we're having this dialogue without being eliminated overnight, a fascist regime could completely call into question with, with the use of arbitrary power. So that there's fascist elements, my brother, there's fascist dimensions. But with Trump, when you have calling into question transfer of power and so forth, that is not the same thing. And so that, that doesn't undermine my campaign at all. The 100%. campaign's about truth. Hundred percent undermines your campaign. Hundred percent, you're no shooting way. yourself right in the dick no before way. you even start. So they don't see it the way that I see it. And to me, I said that this is where Dr. West and I disagree. I told him that both of them uh, are fascists. They just do it in different ways. I think Donald Trump was more overt. I think uh, Joe Biden is more covert. What was interesting to me, though. And I had to remind my audience of this. Jill Stein, when she was running against Hillary Clinton, also said in multiple interviews that Donald Trump was a fascist and Hillary Clinton was, you know, milk toast like neoliberal. So I had to play that clip for people when I said, why didn't we have a problem with that framing back then? Why do we have a problem with it now? And I think it's because people are less tolerant now that we've had Trump and we've had Biden, especially because of the economy. A lot of people are upset about that. But particularly on the left, the threshold is much higher today than it was before. So people are a lot more critical of Dr. West than they were of Jill Stein uh, because of the betrayal of Bernie Sanders and the squad. So people are less trusting on the left today, and that's a big part of the problem. But I think that this comparison about who is more fascist than the other, I think people still have in their mind that this is a Bernie Sanders style run where you're running through the Democratic uh, Party primary. Dr. West is a third party candidate. He's running against Joe Biden and Donald Trump. So the focus shouldn't just be on how bad is Joe Biden. The focus should be on how bad are both of them. And I think some people are still stuck in that that Bernie Sanders campaign style thinking. Okay. well, I'd say however bad fascist is a very specific historical thing. I'm thinking about Italy in the 30s and 40s. I'm thinking about Germany. Uh, and I'm thinking the institutional framework of the United States, and I think I heard Cornel West say this, 
Uh, we got a free press. We got an independent judiciary. We've got the right to assembly. We got a First Amendment and so forth and so on. Um, it's, it's a little bit uh, of a kind of exaggeration, isn't it, to object legitimately to deep state stuff or to um, vaccine mandates or to warmongering. Uh, a little bit of an exaggeration, isn't it, to liken that to fashion. It's a little bit like calling Bernie Sanders in 2016 Oh, he's a Marxist, and you know, he, you know, we can't we can't have a Marxist as our president. It's it's a it's a pejorative. Where, where am I wrong? I think forcing people to take the jab uh, against their will. I think that is an element of of fascism, uh, in my opinion. So I live okay. in Massachusetts. My state was locked down, um, and for those that lived in the states that were not locked down, like my parents lived in South Carolina, they were just as free as could be. Um, so going to visit them was like, it felt like going to a different country because they didn't have all the restrictions we had here in Massachusetts. Uh, that was a very, very challenging time. And then on top of that, my employer and other people's employers, it was required that you had to get the jab in order to keep your job. That to me felt like an element of, of fascism. So there's those types of things. Um, if you want to look back into Joe Biden's background and we talk about Joe Biden's political record, we talk about the crime bills, all those types of things. I think it's on both sides. But uh, I have to say, like, after I watched that interview, I was very disappointed. Just very disappointed. You know, uh, in, both, in both participants. Yes. I was, I was just very dis because that's that's two people that have a long standing relationship it's not like this was just an interview with someone that i admire they know each other they had a relationship and it it's very apparent to me at, even at the very beginning of the interview it seemed personal and i say that also because i know that jimmy did say on his show before that he reached out to the campaign to offer to help with the campaign he talked about this on the show and apparently i guess the campaign either didn't respond or didn't want that, did not want to pursue that. So I think sometimes if if you're friends with someone and you're looking at a professional opportunity, because let's be real, if you're working with someone's campaign, that's still a professional uh, gig there. Sometimes we may think that because they're our friend, that they should want me to help them. They should say, yes, like I want to be a part of your campaign. But I think Dr. West was looking at this from a perspective of, is this going to be helpful for the message that I'm trying to bring across to the people? That could be the possibility. I don't know. But it was obvious. Like I saw the videos leading up to that interview. It was very obvious to me that there was some tension there. 